Now, many of the home builders I deal with, and a couple I'm very close to, have said, look, uh, it's hard for us to complete a house because we can't get the appliances. Is that uh, something that Whirlpool is holding up or is Whirlpool delivering what they want? Yeah, so, so first of all, of course, you know, everybody talks about shortages and they're real. Um, they're not surprising. We have them in Q2 and we will probably face them in Q4. That's labor shortages. Um, you have component or chip shortages and fairly significant transportation delays. But the other way to look at it is why do we have availability challenges? Because demand is strong. Um, the demand is simply outstripping the supply. And to be a little bit more precise, in Q3, we finally produced more in North America than we did in Q3 last year and in Q3 19. So we're ramping up production, but demand is just very strong, and that's a positive signal. All right, so if you were looking, you let's say you were allowed to uh, have futures on every aspect uh, of what you have in, in a washing machine or dryer. Would you be locking in today's prices, or do you think that today's prices are at their peak? You mean from a washing machine perspective? Well, I mean, steel, a lot of people feel it's about to roll over a cliff. I think aluminum is way, way too high. Plastic, I can tell you that the plastic is in my Whirlpool. Uh, I, I question whether that's going to be higher at this point next year. That maybe yeah. this is the top of your raw materials problem. Yeah, so Jim, to be a little bit more specific, you know, but inflationary pressure is real, okay? Um, we've been talking about that ever since Q1. In fact, in Q1, we talked about we expect $1 billion headwinds. Today, our number is $1 billion. So we're probably one of a few companies who are not really surprised by the magnitude. So, And we're dealing with that. Q3, I think, is a proof. We dealt with 6.5% inflation in our numbers, and we delivered very, very strong operating markets. So we can deal with it. Now, to your question, what do you expect going forward? I don't think it's just short-term transitory. Okay. Um, it's probably some cyclical inflation, um, but I don't think it will suddenly drop off a cliff. And I think there will be some carryover into next year. And we've demonstrated we can deal with that. I'm going to give you one more question. Then we got to run. I don't like the way our country is starting to shape up in terms of birth rate. It's the first time that we're not a growing country. To me, it's maybe our biggest worry. We don't talk about it enough. Are you worried about birth rate in this country and other countries? Well, you know, of course, from both from a applying sales perspective, but also from a work perspective, you look at demographics. We look at it in every country because ultimately demographics drive consumption. But frankly, also employment and, you know, um, frankly, from an employer perspective, and we're still we're producing 80 percent of what we sell in the U.S. in the U.S. So we have 20, more than 20,000 employees in the U.S. And I'm starting to get worried that the labor shortage be, start becoming structural. Um, so, yes, demographics are a little bit of worry down the road. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.